International Journal of Health Policy and Management. Quality and speed are our culture and the keys to our success. Welcome to the audio summary section of the International Journal of Health Policy and Management. Hello there. I'm Tristan Price and I'm a research fellow at the Faculty of Medicine and Dentistry at the University of Plymouth. On behalf of current and former colleagues here in Plymouth and also Cardiff University School of Medicine, I would like to introduce you to our paper titled The International Landscape for Medical Licensing Examinations, a Typology Derived from a Systematic Review. National licensing examinations are large-scale examinations usually taken by medical doctors at or close to the point of graduation from medical school. Where licensing exams are used, doctors usually have to pass them to obtain a license to full practice. In the UK, the medical regulator, the General Medical Council, is developing plans for a new form of national licensing examination. As such, they commissioned us to research the existing evidence base for licensing exams. As part of this research, we sought to understand how national licensing exams were used in healthcare systems comparable to the UK. We wanted to understand the implications of having such examinations for workforce planning in modern healthcare systems in which medical students often complete their training in countries different to those in which they end up practicing medicine. These are known as international medical graduates. So our research question was, what different types of national licensing examination are used in countries comparable to the UK? And what are the implications of these systems? for worse workforce planning within these countries. In order to answer these questions, we conducted a systematic review of the published literature on national licensing examinations. We also surveyed any literature available on medical licensing bodies' websites and conducted, and conducted an electronic survey of all medical licensing bodies in highly developed nations. The evidence gleaned through this systematic review highlights four approaches to national licensing examinations based on a candidacy typology, i.e. who takes the exam. Firstly, where graduating medical students wishing to place, practice in their national jurisdiction must pass a national licensing exam before they are granted a license to full practice. Secondly, where all prospective doctors, whether from the national jurisdiction or international medical graduates, are required to pass a national licensing exam in order to practice. Thirdly, where only international medical graduates are required to pass a licensing exam if their qualifications are not acknowledged to be comparable with those in the host nation. And finally, where there are no national licensing examinations in operation. This typology facilitates comparison across systems and, we hope, will be a useful starting point for future research on national licensing. We also examined the literature to identify the implications of these different systems for workforce planning. And we found that those countries that require international medical graduates to pass a national licensing exam, our second and third categories, have the problem of sustaining the recruitment of foreign doctors required to meet the demands of healthcare provision. As such, they apply a degree of pragmatism to their systems to enable international medical graduates to be integrated into their workforce. For example, in Canada, which falls into our second category, international medical graduates can use provincial licensing to practice until they are able to get a full license after passing a national licensing exam. In Australia, which falls into our third category, international graduates are offered relatively easy access to these temporary licenses within specialties in which they have particular needs or, like Canada, in rural areas facing acute doctor shortages. So the key message of our paper is this. While national licensing may go some way towards assuring publics of minimum standards in medical regulation, policymakers and regulators in highly developed countries will need to consider the relative merits of national licensing options in relation to the need to address workforce planning issues. Thank you for watching.